Hello, welcome to Rock Paper Shotgun, where today we're punching a demon so fast that our fists ignite and set all our other moves on fire. We're also shooting out a robotic hand and then jumping on top and riding it like a surfboard. Hell yeah! And if that's not enough for you, we're also summoning a demonic giant and hopping onto its shoulder so it looks like a big scary dad giving his weird emo baby a piggyback. This kind of stuff happens a lot in Devil May Cry 5, a game that is a love letter to crazy video game fun, which is what this video is all about. Of course, before we fly off on our own rocket fists, a bit of the usual business. We've kept out story spoilers, but you will see weapons from throughout the game. We also reviewed it on PC, but we played it with a controller, because a keyboard just can't keep up with the button combos. And if you do enjoy this video, maybe think about subscribing, because to everyone who does subscribe, we raise an ice cool glass of Sapsara Red. It's sunset in a glass. If you don't subscribe, that's fine, but you only get a cold drink. Mmm, generic. If one weapon captures the essence of Devil May Cry 5, it's the Cavalier, a motorbike that splits into giant clubs, each tipped with a spinning tyre that can pull an enemy into an agonising mess of burning rubber and screaming flesh. Delicious! Yes, this is the essence of Devil May Cry 5, a game where you can watch a man hit a lizard with a frickin' motorbike. And now he's spun it around and he's got a goat's head stuck in the back wheel. And now it's shooting through the air like Elliot in E.T., only Elliot didn't use his flying bike to shit up a praying mantis. I can't even see what's going on in this shot because of all the sparks, but I know that it's brilliant because everything is dead at the end of it. When I previewed Devil May Cry 5 a few weeks ago, I didn't think anything was going to top the rocket fist, but this ludicrous murder scooter has won me over. One touch of a spinning wheel against demon flesh and it's off, eating their will to live until you show mercy, tap another button and trigger the next part of the combo. It's everything that's great about Devil May Cry 5. It's visually spectacular, it rewards mastery with ludicrous moves, and most importantly, and this is crucial to Devil May Cry 5's appeal, it has a wonderful physicality. When you swing the Cavalier and the wheels connect, you really feel the snag of the tyre on the enemy. Now begins a game of nerves as you wait for the engine to change colour, which means you can trigger an even nastier follow-up. This pattern of chew and release just feels so good under your thumbs. Devil May Cry is stuffed with this kind of texture and weight. It's there in Scissor Ghosts, whose giant snippers clang against your blade until you shatter them and expose their creepy ass mask for a one hit kill. And it's there in the shields of the Angelo Knights, physically cracking under whirlwind fists. I also like smashing the muzzle off this horrible thing, though it does unleash its terrifying double tongue, which seems like a mistake in hindsight. Things crack, smash and splinter wonderfully in Devil May Cry 5. A special nod to these bookcases. I love a good exploding background prop. Just imagine it's all Dan Brown books if you're feeling bad about trashing a library. Combine it with Nero's time-slowing ragtime arm and you've got proper Matrix magic almost seems a shame that such a good slow-mo effect is limited to one move of one weapon. Dante should learn a trick or two from Bayonetta. It's probably because of the game's sense of weight that I'm drawn to the slow, powerful moves. I love Nero's chopping combo, building deranged momentum like a lumberjack on energy drinks. Or the wind-up and release of Dante's rising punch. A move that would definitely infringe on Street Fighter copyright if it wasn't made by the same company. And imagine my delight when I discovered Nero's Buster Arm. It's one of his swappable prosthetics, and is basically a replacement for his Buster move in Devil May Cry 4. Buster takedowns do huge damage, as long as the animation isn't interrupted by other attacks but it's worth the risk for the bone-crunching collisions. Working out how to land these in boss fights is a game in itself, but when they do land, there's nothing else like it. If so much of Devil May Cry 5's appeal lies in Dante and Nero's powerful impact, where does that leave our third character, V? 
This mysterious newcomer is defined by his lack of physical presence. He sends animal familiars to fight for him as he lurks far away. Compared to Dante and Nero, V is a character with no weight. All your button presses turn into moves happening far in the distance. I wonder if game director Hideaki Itsuno took inspiration from the Sorcerer class in Dragon's Dogma, as that character also stands back as the world erupts in chaos. The only time V does wade in is for surgical finishing blows with his pointy cane. It's a bit like Batman leaping over to knock out Day's thugs in the Arkham games, only V looks like he belongs in Arkham Asylum. Never trust a man who summons Classic FM out of thin air. I wonder if V is going to prove less popular than Nero or Dante. Playing as him, you do feel more removed from the action. My fellow rock paper shotgun writer Matt feels V requires less skill to master, that you can hammer buttons to devastate long distance enemies. I'd agree that V's stages are easier. There aren't enough projectiles or fast moving enemies to threaten him at long distance. The only time you feel really pushed as V is during boss fights, darting around those much fiercer enemies. But what you lose in intensity, you gain in sheer stylishness. This is, after all, a game about playing as beautifully as possible, and V is the only character who could sit back and actually enjoy his own handiwork. There is actually a new system that imports other players' ghost data, so you can see them fighting alongside you in levels. It's quite a sweet idea, especially the way you reward strangers with health items if you feel they were stylish enough. But the idea of watching V watch his animals fight is maybe a bit too meta for me. There is no denying that next to Nero and Dante, V is a simpler hero, but I enjoyed his stages as a palate cleanser, an opportunity to bat around enemies like a cat would a mouse. And yes, you get those SSS rankings a bit more easily with him, and as a slightly clumsy button masher, it's nice to know what that feels like. And if that doesn't convince you, you can't turn your nose up at a character who can summon a giant gloop monster and force him to do an impression of a tornado. Hell yeah! Woo, yeah! I also think V's streamlined moves stand out because everything else in Devil May Cry 5 is about insane escalation. It feels like the game throws new stuff at you all the way up to the end credits. In fact, this is the only game I've played that uses the end credits as a tutorial for a new surprise that's just sprung on you. With Nero, this mainly falls on his Devil Breaker arms, with a drip feed of models grafting on drill bits, whips and time machines. None reinvent Nero in the same way as Dante's fighting styles or weapons, but each adds a new verb to experiment with. Do you fire off the punchline rocket fist to biff a demon about the chops while you focus on his friends? Do you try to lure bugs together to catch them all in the carnage of Helter Skelter, a drill that gets nastier the more you hammer the button? Perhaps you trap enemies in a time-slowing bubble, letting you practice more complicated combos as enemies do a chariot to fire impression. One of my favourites is the Tomboy, which superheats your weapons in a similar style to Nero's Exceed ability. That's where he revs his sword handle with the left trigger to charge a powerful hit. I'm pretty terrible at this, so quite happy for the Tomboy to manage it for me. Take a single hit while using any of these skills and the arm shatters, bringing up the next limb from your ammo clip. Even after all this time, I'm not entirely sure why you can't manually change arm order while in play, but it's a quirk I've learned to work with. Of course, even with all this, Nero has nothing on Dante. His weapons change his entire movesets, some further transforming into new forms, and transforming again based on which of his four fighting stances is adopted. Oh, and that's before activating Devil Trigger and unlocking yet another level of moves. After some 30 hours with the game, I've barely touched his signature swords or the new elemental nunchucks. I'm all about the mighty Balrog and its fists of fire. And even with this, I've only really focused on boxing mode. You can switch to boots instead if you'd rather keep your hands unscorched. Dante only enters the game at the halfway mark and makes up for lost time by gaining a new weapon just about every level. I was just about to say that I'd take my hat off to the designers, but that reminded me of the bit where the game gave me a magic hat that uses the in-game currency as bullets. Yes, a magical hat gun that gambles your red orb supply against the massive red orb payout you get if you kill a monster with it. 
It takes a lot to make a motorbike chainsaw look sensible, but somehow they did it. I can't remember a game that threw so many toys at me in such a short amount of time. The fact of it is, with Dante consigned to about a third of the game's levels, he simply doesn't have the space or physical enemy numbers to use all this stuff. While part of me wishes we had fewer V levels and more missions for Dante to strut his stuff in, I remember that Devil May Cry is all about replaying levels to master those tools. It's interesting then that Devil May Cry 5 feels, to my relatively amateur thumbs, slightly easier than the last couple of entries, at least on its normal difficulty which you must beat to unlock harder modes. I think I died maybe 10 times in the whole game, and each time I revived with a gold doodad I'd found hidden in the level. By the last boss I had 14 of these gold doodads in supply, and almost felt bad for the poor bastard. More noticeably, the star ranking feels more generous this time round. If you're unfamiliar with it, your style is judged on the ability to keep combos going, and to mix up the attack variety. Simply spamming the same move won't impress the invisible judge who bellows out each new ranking, but in DMC5, the star meter is kinder, giving me the kind of scores I'd usually struggle to hit. Maybe I've magically become a better player, unlikely based on every other game in existence, or the criteria has softened. If it has, I don't think it's a bad thing. Getting the occasional savage or sick skills, or the ultimate smoking sexy style, is an intoxicating drug, and a great way to draw you into the game's vast depths. Way back when, when the original Devil May Cry took my newcomer abilities and ranked my playing as dull, I remember it being a real turn-off. I think this is a series that has had a complicated relationship with difficulty, with the earlier entries ping-ponging between too easy and too hard, and rarely just right. Sort of like Goldilocks if she could air juggle the three bears with two handguns. Offering an easier time on your first run through doesn't hurt anyone, the hard difficulties are still there for the fans that want them, and it may make new fans in the process. Whether intentional or not, it's a win-win. Related to difficulty and progress, a quick note on microtransactions. There was mild alarm when Capcom revealed you could purchase red orbs to speed up skill unlocks. Of course, the worry is that when developers set up this kind of market stall, the temptation is to limit the natural flow of currency to encourage you to spend cash. It could be a real shakedown. In reality, the flow of skill orbs is no different to what I'd expect from Devil May Cry. Ignoring a few lavish flourishes, there's a taunt that costs 3 million orbs for example, I never found myself grinding towards goals. After a couple of levels with Dante, I'd fully upgraded his Swordmaster skill and had enough change to buy most of his Balrog upgrades. If anything, progress felt faster than it has in the past, though this could be due to a slightly easier game yielding more orbs as you get higher combo rankings. And as I mentioned before, the game is so overstuffed with weapons to master, the idea you'd want to fast forward progress just doesn't make sense to me. You can't accelerate the way you learn the game by overloading Dante and Nero with extra toys. So ignore the microtransactions, and play it as you would any previous Devil May Cry. You'd be a fool to spend extra money, but you'd also be a fool to get cross about what other fools do with their money. Wait, does that make me the fool? Uh, moving on. Shall we dance? This isn't to say business doesn't get in the way of pleasure. I'm a little annoyed to see some genuinely awesome stuff locked away in the deluxe version. The more expensive special edition adds a couple of silly arms for Nero. He does some Mega Man cosplay with a Mega Blaster. The way his jump becomes all rigid like the Blue Bombers is pretty nifty. And there's a variation on the punchline Rocket Fist made out of... Uh, kitchen utensils. It's forking silly, yes, but I like the microwave ping when it finishes doing its thing. There's also this creepy health restoring contraption, which I think is meant to be some kind of adult toy, but if any kids are watching, just tell them it's for stroking a dog. Wait, is that a euphemism? Oh god, this is such a minefield. None of these are essential, but in a game which is about throwing a mountain of stuff at you, it's sad to see the very peak of that mountain just out of reach. It feels arbitrary to hack out a couple of extra arms. I feel the same way about the amazing previous cutscenes. This is the option to replace the in-game movies with the test footage recorded by the actors. 
I'm really not overstating it when I say it's the funniest video game extra I've ever seen. The way slightly awkward looking men pretend to be giant boss monsters with bits of cardboard stuck to their heads is really, really endearing. It's as if Blue Peter made a beat em up. I get that they need something to justify an expensive special edition, but something this good should just not be kept from the people. If it had been in the regular edition, it would have been the cherry on the cake. Obviously, the deluxe version has to do something to justify itself, but I think that it speaks to Devil May Cry 5's general generosity of spirit that the one time it isn't generous, it really stands out. In just about every other way, this is as thorough a package as you could expect from Capcom. Vast galleries of extra info and character models, secret hidden challenges that ask you to apply your moves in unusual ways, there's a photo mode to freeze those insane moments where your eye simply can't keep up, and there's the promise of free DLC in the form of the Bloody Palace, the series' beloved wave-based combat challenge. Hell, they even managed to nail the warning signs you see on the London Underground. It's also nice to get a proper training mode, though I wish it copied the bayonetta trick of showing you the exact button timings for each of the trickier combos. Not everyone knows how long a gap has to be left between button presses, but when one of your more stinging criticisms is, the tutorial doesn't show you on-screen timings, you know you're in pretty solid territory. Devil May Cry 5 is big, bold, brash game making, a continuation that will likely please the long-term fans and more importantly, invite new people into the fold. As only a casual dabbler myself, this is definitely the entry I've enjoyed the most. I hope you enjoyed this review and that it answered your questions about the game. If you do have any queries, just pop them in the comments below and I'll get them answered as soon as I can. And if you found this review enjoyable, why not subscribe to Rock Paper Shotgun for more like it? We cover all things PC gaming related, so why not check out our recent reviews of Anthem and Metro Exodus for more of our stuff. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you soon.